Ciao guys and welcome back, I'm Luca and in today's video I want to share with you my honest review regarding the Panasonic Lumix S1 after one year of usage both for photography and videography. Stay tuned. In this video I'm going to talk about the positive and negative things about this camera and at the end of the video I will share with you my conclusion if this is the right camera for you. So be sure to watch it until the end and if you are not subscribed yet consider to do it to be updated when I release a new video. The list of the positive features of this camera is pretty long so I'm going to make it short for you and I want to start to talk about the internal codec recording options for video. Uh, the video quality that I'm getting from this camera is pretty outstanding. The ability to, to record internally in 10-bit 4K is uh, really amazing, uh, but uh, I often use mostly the 1080p uh, resolution 10-bit with this camera because the video quality is uh, really good and to my eyes the look is a little bit more organic than 4K resolution. But in both cases, the video quality is pretty amazing. In addition, this camera is using a dual ISO sensor, so if you're filming in log, you're gonna get the best and the cleanest image at ISO 640 or at 4000. So you're gonna get a really great low light capability with this camera. In my test, you're gonna get really clean images uh, to ISO 8000 and usable images at 12,800 ISO. But if you're filming in extreme low light, I advise you to film in HLG picture profile, uh, where you can go up to 51,000 ISO and getting usable images. I'm also really happy about the build quality and the build construction. This camera has been used in really difficult situations, both uh, really hot weather and uh, rainy days and really cold days. And uh, the camera is really reliable. I never had an overheat issue with this camera where I had to stop the recording session because of a warning and uh, the weather ceiling is really nice. I used in really heavy rainy days but also while sailing on a sailboat. I uh, got many splash of water without having any problem at all. In that case, if you get splash of salty water, uh, remember that you always have to wash your camera with uh, just the simple clean water so you can remove the salt that can really ruin the circuits in your camera if it's gonna touch those parts. The viewfinder is pretty amazing. I'm mostly using uh, vintage manual lenses for both photography and videography and I never had the problem that I wasn't sure if the focus was uh, correctly set. The LCD screen and viewfinder are really uh, color accurate, bright and with high resolution and that's really important because I can always check on the field if I did the proper job. So I'm not worried that I go back home and open my files on the computer and seeing something completely different than what I'm seeing in the camera. I had to ditch some other brands because uh, I was uh, having inconsistent results from what I was seeing in the camera and what I was seeing in my computer and that's a, a big problem for me. Another amazing feature that I love about this camera is the outstanding IBIS performances. When you pair this camera with the 24105F4, that is a stabilized lens, you're gonna get outstanding stable videos. And you're gonna be able also to take long exposure photos, uh, for example, up to two seconds at 24 millimeters. And so you're gonna travel way more lightweight. You don't have to bring with you a gimbal or a tripod if it's not necessary. And because I travel a lot around Europe for work, that's a great feature for me because uh, let me travel way lighter and in another way, I can also travel way cheaper because I don't have to book the, all the luggage that is going on the deposit of the airplane. And when you start to travel often and you're gonna spend those 50 euros for every trip, at uh, the end of the year, there are quite a bit of money that you can spend for other camera equipment or you can take a nice holiday. Another feature that I love of this camera is the tilting screen. Many people complain about this, but for me it's really quick and efficient. And if I need to vlog or check if I'm filming myself properly 
uh, I can always attach a monitor and if I travel lightweight I can always attach uh, a little mirror on top of it. For example this little tool you can just put on top of the hot shoe and you're gonna be able to see what's happening on the screen. Another feature that I love about this camera is the high resolution mode. You cannot imagine how handy is this feature. Uh, if you are a landscape photographer you can bring with you just the 24 105 millimeter and shooting at uh, high resolution mode uh, you zoom all the way to 100 millimeter you're gonna get an equivalent of 400 millimeters in post-production while you crop your photo. But now let's talk about the negative things of this camera. The main problem that I'm having with this camera is that I cannot get a consistent look in full frame. So I don't have an option to film at 24 FPS in full HD 10 bit. I don't know why Panasonic did include this option. And uh, if I want to film in 4K, I only have a 4K full frame or 4K 60 frames per second in crop mode. So the only solution to get a consistent look in your images while filming is to film always in crop mode, both in 24 FPS or 60 FPS. And that's a big problem for me because I like the full frame look. Uh, I bought a full frame camera and full frame lenses and I don't find this really great. There are many friends that are really disappointed about this lack of 24 FPS full HD. So please Panasonic, if you're listening, add this feature, please. There is a list of minor problems of this camera that are really subjective. For example, this camera can be too big and too heavy uh, for some of you. I understand that. For me it's a plus, but uh, if you are used to have uh, really lightweight cameras and you really need to travel lightweight, uh, this camera is uh, quite heavy. Uh, it's almost, uh, no, it's actually more than one kilogram uh, without the lens. And uh, it's okay if you're using a small lens, but when you start to use heavy lens like the 24 f4 or the 24-70 f2.8, uh, the camera is going to be a little bit too heavy for your wrist. Uh, so you should always use the camera with two hands in a way that you're not gonna stress your wrist and uh, having the risk to injury your wrist and uh, having problems in the future. So take care of yourself while you take photos and don't use just one hand. Always use two hands. Another little problem you can have with this camera is just the tiltable screen and not the flip out screen. It's a minor thing in my opinion, it's not a huge deal breaker because if you operate the camera from behind, you're gonna be fine anyway. The last problem that I'm gonna share with you that I found out with this camera, it's basically the lack of uh, lenses that performs well in autofocus. Panasonic released only zoom lenses and uh, a 50 mm f1.4 prime. I use myself 99% of the time just primes and uh, I really find it frustrating that after uh, almost two years, there are no primes yet. They are releasing them during the end of 2020 and uh, at the beginning of 2021 but uh, I would have liked to see more prime lenses because in some situations I would have liked to have a prime lens that was weather sealed and uh, able to autofocus properly because the Leica L lenses and the Sigma Art lenses made for L mount alliance are not working properly with the autofocus system of Panasonic. Uh, it's stressing their motors too much so the autofocus speed is really slow and most of the time is not accurate in video. For photography they work uh, pretty decently, but uh, in video they are not usable at all. It's not a big problem for the majority of Panasonic users because we are all used to use uh, manual focus lenses, but it can be a problem if you are new in the Panasonic uh, Lumix uh, world. Regarding the autofocus performance with native lenses, I can tell you that this camera is performing pretty well in photography, but for video it's not that great, but I consider it usable. And don't forget that having such a high resolution viewfinder, you can always use manual vintage lenses that you can find for way cheaper than modern lenses, and you're gonna be actually faster uh, on grabbing focus by yourself. So don't be afraid of using uh, manual lenses, it's just a matter of uh, time and experience. So in conclusion, for the video work, if you're a cinematographer, this camera is pretty outstanding because it doesn't have uh, any time uh, recording limits, it doesn't overheat, and when you are paying the crew, the cast and the location, that's huge, because you're gonna save time without waiting for your camera to cool down 
or uh, to interrupt the recording session and then start after a time limit. The dynamic range is pretty amazing. It's a usable 12.3 stops of dynamic range. The color signs and the skin tones are pretty amazing. This camera is featured with a full HDMI port and a time code sync port as well. So for cinematographers, this is a great camera to start to work with. For events and travels videographer, this camera is pretty outstanding because you don't have to bring with you gimbals or external monitors, so you're gonna travel more lightweight and you'll be able to deliver great content for your clients or your own production stuff. And if you are content creator for social medias like Instagram, TikTok or Facebook, for example, it's not really necessary to spend that much of the money in this camera because this is a camera that is gonna deliver uh, really high quality photos and videos and the compression of those social medias is gonna waste the purpose of buying this camera. So you can just buy, for example, a 300 euros camera that will do the job good enough for what you're doing. On the photography side, if you are a fashion documentary or a portrait photographer, this camera is delivering outstanding photos thanks to the lack of the anti-aliasing filter and the color signs of the camera. 99% of the time, I'm just using the JPEGs straight out of the camera. Uh, even if I'm shooting JPEGs plus RAW. The writing speed is really fast because this camera is featured with a XQD card plus an extra slot with a SD card with a writing speed of V90. If you're a landscape photographer, this camera is gonna be really reliable on you. The weather ceiling is outstanding. The image quality, it's fantastic. The lens available in L Mount Alliance are pretty outstanding for landscape photographers. And don't forget that the high resolution mode is gonna uh, avoid the problem of buyer sensor. So in this way, you're gonna get a full RGB readout of uh, what you are taking the photos of. So you're gonna get a uh, way better chromatic uh, information in the photos you're taking. Is this camera for everyone? Absolutely not. And actually any camera in the market is not for everyone. If you really need autofocus continuous while taking videos, this camera can be really disappointing for you. The results are not consistent. And in the photography side, if you are a sport or uh, wildlife photographer, this camera is not fast enough to take a fast burst of photos. It's gonna take only six photos per seconds. Plus, there is no uh, super long telephoto zoom lens. For the rest, if you're not doing this type of jobs, this camera is just outstanding. And I can easily say that this is the best hybrid camera you can find until now in the market. So I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I'll see you next time and thank you for watching. Ciao.